Question of the day, were your tires manufactured the same year as your tractor? And does it even matter? Folks, how we doing? Welcome to Good Works Tractors. You know, I get a lot of interesting questions that I've just never thought about myself. A lot of viewers, a lot of customers sent things in to me and uh, it's kind of fun. You know, it's it can be confounding <laughs> at times and, and that's, well, I guess that's where I'm looking for some of your advice, some of your input and feedback on it. And um, I don't know if a lot of you have ever thought about this or not, but I had an email come in from a customer recently and uh, they had just bought a brand new John Deere 3033R. Love the tractor, except they looked at the tires and saw that they were manufactured in 2015. And now mind you, it's 2022. And so anyway, so simple question that he asked, who's responsible, dealer or manufacturer? And so me, I wasn't quite sure where he was going with that. And so I, I asked him to clarify responsible for what? And so let's see what he has to say. All right, so he says, the dealer self ordered the tractor and had R4 tires installed at the manufacturer. I bought the tractor as ordered, but I bought a, in quote, or in parentheses, devalued tractor with front tires six years older than the tractor. And they're starting to weather check. So basically I feel the manufacturer owes me tires that should match the tractor age. I will be buying new tires sooner than I should because they're six years older than the unit. Who's responsible to correct the issue? Me, the dealer, the manufacturer? The rear tires are correct with tractor age and I'm thinking of sending an email to the DOT, the Farmers Association, the Farmers Union, to educate the farmers, this could be going on nationwide. Who would check tire dates when buying a new tractor? Buying my tractor in 2021 was right in the middle of the COVID pandemic. Okay, so it's a 2021. I guess it's just coming to light now. So it could have been a mistake or purpose done to get units out the door with the tire shortage. All right, so right there, um, I learned a couple things. Doing some research, I found that tires manufactured after the year 2000 now have the date, the month and the date as well as I think it's the factory, the manufacturer, all codes that are stamped into the tire itself. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna check out a couple things here and see if we can uh, see if our tires match up with the age of some equipment that we bought. And so at a higher level, I had, I don't know if I had taken this for granted or not, but I had never given it a lick of thought. And so I tried to think about this as a consumer. I tried to think about it as a manufacturer. I tried to think about it as a dealer because in one regard or another, I'm all three. So from the consumer end of things, Let's just take a, a tractor, a UTV, a truck, you know, some more complex piece of machinery that's got a lot of parts in it that you know are being sourced from other sub-tier suppliers and sub-components and, and being put together at an OEM manufacturer. I don't think I care a lot, um, unless it's going to sort of in this example, potentially lead to a, a, a degradation of the quality of a piece of equipment. So. I think it's really strange that these front tires came from John Deere weather checked. You would think that things that are sitting there are all inside, are covered, uh, not exposed to the elements, especially not for six years. I think that's a really strange situation. Um, and probably in an in instance like that where something could be exposed and, um, you know, start to deteriorate over time, I would be more inclined to have an issue with it. But something that's like an an engine or another component that's just sitting on a shelf somewhere just waiting to be pulled off and used as long as there were no recalls or other serious issues with functionality or performance or a change or an improvement that would be seen now i don't think i have an issue with that but the weather checking for me would be a, a big issue and i can't believe it even made it out its door out of john deere out of uh, the dealer's hands and, and to the customer in that kind of condition so as a manufacturer again kind of the same aspect of it, you know, you're, you're getting all these components and you're ordering some extras and whatever else, and you're getting them all in. And that's based on a, um, not typically hard orders, but on, on estimation of, of production runs that you're going to uh, be putting out and, and what's going to be sold. And you're going to build things in batches and, and whatever else. So you're going to always wind up with a little bit extra, maybe sometimes not enough and so on and so forth. And when you roll from one model year to the next, you know, you're going to have something that's manufactured say in 2021 and now it's 2022 or you know, 2022 and 2023 is coming up too. So, you know, I don't think that that's really that big of a deal. Um, I don't think that you need to necessarily have every single component 
end year machine being the same model year. You know, and I do think, <laughs> I've asked this question to, well, sort of rhetorically to some buddies as we've had conversations over the last couple of years, but, you know, Outdoors with the Morgans did a video recently showing 40,000 Super Duty trucks at Kentucky Motor Speedway. And the same thing's been going on all over the place throughout the pandemic when you're waiting on chips or you're waiting on something else and you can't sell it. And you're definitely rolling into new model years. And how are they treating that model year designation? Are they going to just magically make a 2021, now it's a 2022? or a 2022, now it's magically a 2023, even though they do like design changes? Are they gonna discount that stuff because it's a model year older? What's going on with that? I don't really have the answer, but it's something that I can't find anybody else has a really good answer for either. And so from a dealer perspective, you know, I don't really, I don't sell tractors anymore. I just sell attachments. And so it's not really affecting things like, like just hard steel parts nearly the same way that it would with a, a tractor or a truck or anything else. And so, it'd almost be kind of a caught in the middle, right? Because a manufacturer is seldom going to want to discount something that's older. Uh, they're still gonna to try to get full value for it, at least kind of in my experience in dealing in that world. But as a consumer, if something is older and being sold as newer, they want a discounted price. And so as a dealer, you're kind of stuck in the middle trying to, to make all of that work and come together. You're being pinched from both ends, right? The, the manufacturer still wants that premium dollar. The customer wants a a discount, right? A lower value placed on that for being older and you somehow just get stuck in the middle. So that's a fine line to walk there. And, you know, I would probably lean on manufacturers to help me out as a dealer representing them to get customers something that's appropriately valued. And whether that's successful or not, I don't know. I'm just glad I don't really have to deal with that. Folks, I wanna take just a second to tell you about our channel sponsor, RimGuard. They're a liquid ballast solution. They line up with exactly what we do here on Good Works, which is talking about tractors and tractor safety. We see it as simple as this. If you own a tractor, you need RimGuard. In fact, some tractors include RimGuard as standard out of the factory. Liquid ballast is simply weight, all right? And this weight hides inside your tires. It stays there all the time. It's a safety concern because tractors are almost always too light and too tippy out of the factory. The number one attachment used by every tractor owner is their front end loader. So when you pick up something heavy on the front end, your back end wants to pick up off the ground. RimGuard liquid ballast helps keep your back end planted to the ground. But beyond safety, it's gonna help maintain traction because if those rear tires, those power driving tires are on the ground, you have traction to go where you need to. And you're gonna operate more efficiently because if those rear tires aren't on the ground, you're not gonna pick up as much as you need to or take it where you need to go. RimGuard is all natural. That means it's safe. It is the heaviest per gallon, all natural product on the market. It's not gonna freeze, it's not gonna corrode, and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. To find a dealer, visit RimGuardSolutions.com to make your tractor safer today. All right, so I believe we've got a 20 21 Kubota here in my tractor. We found it on here, okay? 45, 20, so 45 is the 45th week, 20 is a year. So, what is that, November? Probably in November of 2020 is when these tires are manufactured. Tail end of 2020 for a 2021. The front tires are actually 44, 20, so the 44th week of 2020. Our big text trailer had 0721 on there, so the seventh week of 2021 when the tires were made, the serial number plate actually says that trailer was made on the 8th of June, 2021. Now let's see how this situation was resolved for our customer. All right, so anyway, I basically said the same thing to this, uh, to this customer that emailed me and a few days later, I get a follow-up response from him. This essentially has the resolution of the whole thing right here. It's, it's, it's a, little, a bit long-winded, but I think it's worth reading. All right, so overall, a good outcome here. He says, the dealer at first was passing the issue onto the tire company and calling it a warranty issue, which John Deere has no control or responsibility on behalf of the old tires installed. That doesn't make any sense to me. They said it was my responsibility to have the tire supplier, Galaxy, make good of it. I told the dealer, Warranty doesn't apply to six-year-old tires being installed on a brand new tractor. In my next breath, I reminded him if I do not get new tires at no cost to me, I was gonna send out an informant email to a law firm, to the DOT, Farmers Association, the Farmers Union, it's gonna copy me, okay? Um, the salesman, the CEO of John Deere, the CEO of the dealership. I can tell there's a lot of back and forth going on uh, between him and the dealership because he goes on to say, the dealer says, send me pictures, I'll contact Deere. He sends him the pictures, doesn't hear anything, not wanting to create a big mess involving everyone, thinking it's just a dealership with poor public relations. I decided to contact the CEO of the dealership. I explained the situation to him, not once saying I was gonna retaliate in any way. He acknowledged 
the concern that I had that I bought a tractor from them with old tires. I said I sent all the information to your salesman, but I didn't get a response. And at that point, the CEO said, let me check into it and I'll call you right back. So three hours later, the original salesman where he bought the tractor calls and says, I have new tires ordered and when they come in, we're gonna mount them for you. And so his moral of the story is that Brian is just a bad apple that should not hold the position he has. I told him it's not the sale that makes the customer, it's how the customer is treated after the sale. And so anyways, good news, he's getting new tires from the dealer thanks to the CEO of the dealership. So all in all, good news, um, something I'm glad I don't have to deal with. Um, something I don't know if anybody else out there has deal with, maybe not with tires, but with some other similar, well, you know what, now that I say that, 3046R that I bought years ago, whenever it was, um, this was pre-pandemic when dealers actually had inventory that would sit on lots for a while and sometimes it would roll into a new model year and, and maybe six months or longer. Anyway, the one that I bought, the trim rings on it, the chrome trim rings on the hood, there's a couple other spots too that had uh, pitting or corrosion, some kind of discoloration on there. And to me, I didn't like that, right? Um, and so they did end up replacing those trim rings, those little pieces there. Uh, wasn't a huge issue, something that, you know, I could have probably maybe even used a little scouring pad or something and got it off of there, I don't know. But I guess I have had that happen to me as a consumer. Um, and we're probably gonna start seeing more of those little types of things now that we're kind of post pandemic, the huge rush on tractors has, has kind of died down and people can actually get inventory and stock it. You're gonna start to see things sitting out in lots a little while longer. It's really kind of a, a tricky situation, you know? tractor lots, car dealerships, all that stuff have inventory sitting outside. I mean, imagine the expense you'd have to have to have an entire lot that was covered, right? So I don't know. I don't know where that responsibility lies or not, what to expect or not. Um, it's probably different in a case by case and, and every customer is gonna have different expectations, but that is a always a touchy subject. So that's gonna wrap it for us today, folks. We'd love to know what you have to think, so leave a comment down below. Now we sell tractor attachments and we ship them all over the country. Check out what we have to offer at goodworkstractors.com. If you enjoyed today's video and you wanna see more, we'd love to have you tag along. Hit that subscribe button down below, it's completely free. I wanna thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by, and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon. Yeah.